What if Minecraft had much, much better villagers? Hello and welcome back to What If, the series where I write a custom mod for each and every episode just to explore some new ideas in Minecraft. And today we are back to show some of the much anticipated progress to my huge villager overhaul mod. Now, for those of you that might not have seen the first video of this mod, I highly, highly recommend you go check it out now. But let's do a quick recap anyways. So far, we have lumberjacks that are chopping down trees and replanting the sap. We've got farmers that are harvesting all sorts of crops and replanting them all. And of course, there's miners that are going deep underground with a custom pathfinding system I wrote. They're digging their own mine shafts and bringing up the ore for the blacksmith to craft all sorts of tools and armor for the other villagers. And of course, all resources are delivered to and picked up from a central community storage building. So in short, I'm in the process of completely overhauling villagers and making a challenge challenging game within Minecraft about building your own village with many new professions and tons of new building types. The player's goal will be to develop a growing village economy, deciding how and when to expand it, and to make sure that all the villagers have the supplies they need to thrive. So what do you say we check out some of the new stuff? Well, for starters, these new villagers are vulnerable. Zombies, of course, want to eat their face, and without any help, they're going to be constantly running for their lives. So what do you say we give them a little protection? Say hello to the guard. Huh. The village guard is the primary protector of this new village, and he's got a couple of talents to help him do his job quite well. When any villager spots an enemy, they can just call for help, and the guards will come running to protect them, regardless of how far away they are. And the more villagers that call for help against a particular enemy, the more priority the guards will give it. So what we end up with is guards attacking the zombies that are actually the most threat to the village. And guards also have the ability to respond very quickly to a situation. When they're answering a call of threat from another villager, they can move at double speed to get there in time. But of course, if a guard is going to be effective at saving other villagers and keeping himself alive, he's going to need some equipment. So now, the blacksmith can use the iron and diamonds obtained from miners to craft iron and diamond swords and armor for the guards. So all the guards will now keep an eye on the community storage chest, and whenever they see a piece of gear that is better than what they're currently using, they'll run over to swap out their current gear for the upgrade. And of course, the better gear a guard is wearing, the more he'll be able to defend himself and his village from threats. And if you happen to be lucky enough to get a guard decked out in full diamond gear, Gear and diamond sword, your village is going to be doing quite all right. Your guards also respect the true chain of command. As you walk through town, the guards will turn and salute their commander. Before you have guards in your village, it'll be up to you to personally defend all your villagers. But that won't be easy for long, because in the next What If episode, you'll see what happens when a village starts to grow. It gains the attention of some much more powerful enemies. But for now, let's move on to a new villager. Meet the Rancher, Hello. our most complex villager so far. The Rancher handles all the animals in town, four of them to be specific, the cows, the pigs, the sheep, and the chickens. And he's gonna breed them, he's gonna feed them, he's gonna harvest resources from them, and he's gonna keep them where they belong in their pens. And to do all these things, we'll need four new structures, the cow pen, the sheep pen, the pig pen, and the chicken coop. Animal pens are just like any other building, except instead of walls, you'll probably want fences, and instead of doors, you can use fence gates. Now, of course, this is all your choice. If you prefer to put your animals inside a barn instead, that's totally up to you as the town builder. So the thing to know is that all ranchers will maintain all four types of animals. So you don't need a dedicated cow rancher or a dedicated sheep rancher. Instead, all the ranchers will share all animal jobs between them. And you'll definitely want more than one. So let's take a closer look at the rancher's job. So your animals in the village do require food. They need to be fed or eventually they're going to starve. Luckily though, your rancher will take care of all this for you. He knows which animals are the hungriest and he will feed them in that order. 
the correct food for each animal will be retrieved from the community storage area. So cows and sheep are going to eat wheat, pigs are going to eat potatoes, carrots or beets, and chickens are going to eat wheat seeds. Which means that after a farmer harvests wheat, he'll have a few seeds extra to deliver to the storage for chicken feed. And this also means that ranchers are completely dependent on farmers. It also means you'll need more farmers to support the ranchers since most of the farmers' output now will be used to feed animals in addition to the other villagers. The breeding system is pretty close to vanilla. As your rancher feeds the animals, they may get some floating hearts above their head, and if you're lucky, a new baby animal might appear. So your collection of animals will grow over time, but the size of your pen determines its maximum capacity, so once an animal pen is full, feeding the animals will no longer put them into breeding mode. Now the ranchers will also harvest from your animals, so your cows will be milked, your sheep will occasionally be sheared when the wool is available, chicken eggs will be collected from the chicken coop, and pigs will... well let's face it, pigs are really just there for the bacon. And after all this gathering, your ranchers are going to deliver milk, wool, and eggs to the community storage area, which will then be used by a future villager profession. And all of this contributes to a much tighter economy and more dependency between your villagers, and this is a good thing. Now if by chance your animals do escape their pens, and let's face it, the ranchers sometimes leave the gates open just a bit too long, well that's not a problem, okay? The rancher will hook them up to a lead and bring them back to their homes safe and sound. And as you can probably see, the animals currently aren't that great at opening fence gates all by themselves, so I've, uh, I I've mutated their DNA a bit, and they can now teleport through fence posts when they're leashed, which I must say is quite convenient. Now I mentioned a minute ago that an animal pen can become full where the animals will no longer breed. I think we should probably do something with all that delicious walking meat. What do you say? Here comes the butcher. So if a full animal pen means no more breeding, then we need to clear it out. And this is where our friend, the butcher, comes in. When a pen is close to full, the butcher will saunter over to the animal pen, hook up an animal with the lead, and take it for a little walk. And this, of course, is the happiest walk ever for the animal, who gets to see all new parts of town and gets to socialize with many villagers on the way. Unfortunately for the animal, this walk ends with some minor inconveniences. That being death. You see, we have a new structure that shares the same name as the profession, the butcher. Our bloody apron-wearing friend will lead his animal into this happy building and efficiently perform his duties. However, he will need an axe from the blacksmith in order to do his job, or things just get a little awkward with the animals. Assuming that the process goes well though, the butcher will then begin collecting all sorts of new resources. From cows, he's going to get leather and beef. From sheep, he's going to get wool and mutton. From chicken, he's going to get feathers and chicken meat. And from pig, he's going to get the delicious, delicious pork. And all of these resources will eventually be used by future professions to make some very valuable and important items for all the other villagers. Now as the sun falls late in the day and our villagers are tired and ready to check out, they'll eventually call it a day at their jobs and look to head home for the night. So let's give them what they need. A home is a new structure that is identified by a bed in the item frame adjacent to the door. And inside the home, you as the town builder can craft and place beds. Each newly placed bed will be claimed by a villager who will then own that bed. Now you'll need many homes to accommodate your many villagers. Putting too many beds in a single home will make your villagers pretty miserable. 
I'd say two to five per home is a good number to keep them happy. So every evening at dusk, your villagers will return to their home for some relaxation, socializing, and some much needed downtime. In the next update, I plan to make this evening time be much more social with a variety of fun time activities that the villagers can do to keep themselves happy. But for now, the villagers will eventually get sleepy and decide it's time to drift off into dreamland. Eventually, all villagers need to sleep. When the time comes, the villager will head over to his bed, lay down, and get some much needed rest. Now, of course, with a nose as big as theirs, some minor snoring is to be expected. Now, while a villager is sleeping, he will regenerate some of the injuries that he might have sustained during the day, and this is the only natural way for villagers to be healed outside of magical means. If, however, you don't have enough beds for your villagers, they will wander around town at night, and this isn't good for their happiness or their sanity, and will generally cause them to be miserable. In the morning, the villagers will slowly pop out of their beds, shake off the sleepiness, and return to their jobs. And every day, each villager will slightly randomize their daily schedules a bit to make the village feel more alive and unpredictable. Some villagers will be early risers, while some will stay up late and sleep in in the morning. Guards, however, are a bit different. Their job, of course, is to keep the village safe at night when they're needed most, so they'll take turns sleeping during the daylight hours to avoid leaving the city defenseless at night when the danger is higher. Now let's say hello to the architect. Hello. Okay, so the architect isn't really a villager. He doesn't claim a bed and he doesn't sleep. He pretty much just wanders the town hall all day. Did I mention there's a town hall? Yeah, there's a town hall structure now. It doesn't do much yet other than give the architect a place to wander, but much more will be added to it in future updates. The architect will spawn automatically inside the town hall once you build it. For now, he's mostly just a vending machine and you trade with him to buy all of your new structure markers. Only structure markers that come from the architect will work in creating a new village structure. For instance, if you craft your own bed and place it in an item frame, the villagers won't even see it. The important thing here is that the architect represents the first step in giving the player his or her own economy that they need to manage carefully. It's time for Mr. Greedy himself, the merchant. Speaking of the player economy, the traveling merchant is at the heart of it. And of course, emeralds are the currency. Every morning, there is a good chance that the wandering merchant will arrive at the far outskirts of town, wander in slowly, and begin mingling with the other villagers. Now, like the architect, the merchant is not an actual member of the village. He only visits every other day, and at dusk, he travels off into the sunset. What does the merchant do, you ask? Well, he buys and sells goods. Lots of them. For starters, he'll sell you any low quality stone tools you'll need to get a profession started. For instance, this is how you get your first pickaxe for your miners and your first axe for your lumberjacks. Now keep in mind, these tools are pretty horrible and expensive. You'll quickly want to have your villagers create their own tools. But the coolest thing you can buy from the traveling merchant is animals. This is how you get your first villager animals for your ranchers. All you do is find the animal head you want and place an order. The next morning, the merchant will return, leading that animal into town behind him. And once he gets that animal or animals into town, your ranchers will pick them up and lead them to the correct pen. Now you might be asking yourself, where do you get all these green colored emeralds to buy things? Well, they surely don't come from the boring vanilla villagers. Their emeralds won't even work here. The answer of course is you get them from the merchant himself. He wants to buy your XS villager goods. Got a bunch of extra logs? Sell them to the merchant. Got more wheat than you know what to do with? The merchant will buy it from you. However, there is a catch. Don't go thinking you could just make some huge lumberjack operation or dozens of fields of potatoes and sell in bulk to get crazy rich. The merchant has his own wants and needs and likes to diversify his stock. His prices vary and change based on his current inventory. So if you start selling a huge number of one item to him, the price will drop drastically to the point of it just being worthless to him. But at the same time, the price of all the other items will rise slightly. So the key is diversity. 
Okay, so let's chat a little bit about how building and growing a successful village will be its own challenging game within Minecraft. One of the key decisions I made about this mod is how to handle the community storage. I've decided to let the player take whatever items they want out of the villager storage. In fact, they have to so that they can sell to the merchant to gain emeralds. However, a player can't give their own items to the villagers. A village must be self-sustaining and get all of its needed resources by itself. For instance, if you build an iron farm and drop a double chest full of iron ingots into the community storage, the blacksmith won't even see it. So this introduces the concept of what I'm calling villager items. Any item that is harvested or created directly by a villager will be marked as a villager item, and you can identify them by their green colored name. Villagers will only see and use villager items, and the merchant will only buy and sell villager items, and the emeralds you get from the merchant will also be villager emeralds and are the only currency that the merchant will in turn accept. Now, just like villager items, there are also villager animals. Animals purchased from the merchant are villager animals. Baby animals that are bred by a rancher from another villager animal will also be marked as a villager animal. However, if you bring over your own truckload of cows, don't expect the ranchers to feed or harvest them. So what does all this mean? It means basically that you can't muck with the economy. My goal is to make growing a village to be a challenging game, and any of that other stuff would pretty much break that game. So, to grow your village, you're gonna have some really tough decisions to make. You'll want to acquire emeralds as fast as possible, of course, so you'll want to sell all your extra goods to the merchant. But what you do with those emeralds should be very interesting. Do you expand your village and spend the emeralds on a new structure from the architect? Or do you buy pickaxes for your miners so that your blacksmith can start better equipping your guards? Maybe you focus on ranchers for high quality food to keep all your villagers happy. There will be plenty of options. So obviously there are many questions remaining. How do you get new villagers? Can they change professions? Will there be children? Trust me guys, I have plans for all of these things and all of the other questions you might have, but they are not implemented yet, so I'm gonna wait until next episode to show them off. However, I will be happy to give a teaser of some of the stuff I'm still planning on adding. We're gonna have tons of exciting new professions. There are still many new structures to come. A complete happiness and morale system where just about everything the villagers do will raise or lower their mood. Children! Yes, we will have them and I cannot tell you how excited I am to implement them. I have plans for a complete villager skill system. What about global upgrades that you purchase in the town hall for your entire village? And of course, once the mod is ready for the alpha phase, I plan on starting a Let's Play slash Let's Develop YouTube series where I start from scratch in a new world building a village and I make dev changes as I go. It's going to be great. I, I'll be able to make deep dives into all the rules and explain all the details of the mod. And I'd also like to mention the village and pillage update that is coming to vanilla. Some people have expressed concern that the upcoming Village and Pillage update to vanilla will make this mod obsolete. Let's just say that while I'm excited about what's coming to vanilla, I'm not concerned. Honestly, I'm fairly certain that what I'm doing here is way more than they would ever consider doing. All right, that will do it for this massive episode of What If. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please remember to subscribe to get the next updates to this amazing villager mod. As always, thank you so much to my Patreon team for putting together this amazing village. And guys, please leave me some comments, some feedback, some questions, some thoughts, whatever it is you want. I love reading every single one of them. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time.